that Wednesday this week, it's going to be two years since the first lockdown in the UK was announced. Uh, time flies, doesn't it? Two years ago. Uh, Boris Johnson told us all, of course, to stay home. And uh, three days later, lockdown measures legally came into force. Now, there's lots of questions around the whole COVID-19 thing, uh, not least how deaths were recorded during the pandemic. Uh, and ultimately, were we locked down for the right reasons, the wrong reasons? Should we ever have been locked down at all? Got to say, in hindsight, I say no. Um, Mariana Hotta, your thoughts on all of this? You might not be surprised to think that I disagree with you, Michelle. Um, That's all right. So this this kind of the focus at the moment, obviously because of the, the anniversary, it's, it's kind of looming large. But the bottom line is, at the moment, the official estimates um, or the official record of COVID deaths in the UK is... 164,000 and 20.2 million cases. Now, it's right to point out that in those first early days of the lockdown, early weeks, early months, it was chaotic and lots and lots of agencies were struggling to keep up. All the medics were worried. We didn't know what this virus was. And let's not forget, let's not kind of do some kind of weird time warp thing and think that the, the COVID-19 that we were dealing with in March, April, May 2020 was Omicron, because it wasn't. Omicron is a, a milder case, which for most people results in, in kind of cold-like symptoms. The COVID that people were getting back two years ago was a version that would kill you, particularly if you had what's known as comorbidity, something else that otherwise wouldn't have shortened your life potentially. But you get COVID as well. And that's you on a ventilator in intensive care and your family grieving around a, 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 a graveside. I mean, to put it bluntly. Yeah, I mean... So there are questions around how accurate our statistical reporting was, what the protocols were. And we need to sort those out. That is important to do that forensic analysis because COVID-19 won't be the last pandemic that we face. Ours is a globally connected world and they are coming. These viruses mutate, they jump from species to species, they spread around the world. We need to be better prepared for the next one. And that's why this is important. It shouldn't actually be. I think it's a bit of a, a sideshow to say, well, maybe, maybe a few, a few figures here and there aren't quite as accurate because the excess death figures, which are reliable because they're, they're kind of absolute numbers, suggest that, for example, March to May 2020, um, uh, there were 55,000 excess deaths, so more than what you'd expect from, for example, the same time the year before. 63,000 in winter 2020, which is six times higher than t winter 2019. David, my, my, I listen there intently to everything Mary Ann says. Now, my problem with all of this COVID situation is I think that we um, almost sleepwalked into some form of hysteria and Anyone that dared to question the narrative, anyone that dared to even say, hang on, can I just clarify something? Are these people dying with COVID or from COVID? You were immediately called a COVID idiot. Mm. Um, you were regarded as stupid. Uh, people almost wanted to ostracize you for asking simple, basic questions. The journalists at the press conferences had no ability, seemingly, to ask a simple question about lockdowns. Do we need these? Uh, what is the impact of these lockdowns going to be? I feel personally like we lost our minds over COVID. What's your thoughts? Yeah, well, people are now talking about mass formation psychosis. And mm -hmm. this is what happened from the very beginning. Uh, you're absolutely right. And people were called worse than that. I was called a granny killer uh, for questioning the narrative or daring to question what came out of SAGE. And uh, there was a huge amount of fear mongering that went along with the whole narrative coming from the government and the people behind them uh, to try to get the lockdown in place. But I think, you know, a lot of people who are critical thinkers could see from the very beginning that this was just being uh, blown up out of all proportion. First of all, the first lockdown wasn't based on COVID figures. It was based on Professor Ferguson's dodgy modelling. You know, he no, said... No, it's not dodgy modelling. He said... Modeling uh, hang on, I didn't... I, I, yeah, I, let him, he was let wrong. Him. I didn't interrupt you. But, you know, so when we, what happened was he said that there will be 500,000 people would die uh, of this um, SARS-CoV-2, which is the name of the virus. 
um, if they didn't lock the country down. But on the very day that they went through Parliament and um, voted for the Coronavirus Act, he changed his modelling and he said, well, no, it's not going to be 500,000. It's only going to be about 20,000 now. So but that was too late. Uh, the, part, the act was passed. We had the lockdown. And then, OK, there was an increase in total mortality between March and May 2020. But then there was a decrease below the five-year average uh, <coughs> over the rest of the year in 2020. So if you look at 2020 as a whole, um, the total mortality is just the same in line with the, uh, the last 20 years. It's in the middle. So there was no um, real epidemic uh, that is out of the ordinary that, uh, in 2020. There's so many things wrong with that. But just hold those <laughs> thoughts because I just want James's view. James? Well, uh, I grew up to books called How to Lie with Statistics and the Use and Abuse of Statistics. And strict, strictly speaking, we're not talking about the forecasts here, I believe, David. We're talking about, you know, how we measured the the deaths, what the causes were, and so on. Now, according to the Daily Mail report from scientists in Oxford and a charity that I'd not heard of before called Collateral Global, uh, no, in no fewer than 14 different terms were used by medical authorities to describe a person who had died with COVID, including underlying COVID, due to COVID, involving COVID, and died within, within 28 or 60 days of a positive test. Now, you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist or somebody who believes that everything the government says is always a lie, I'm not that somebody, to believe that the statistical handling of this epidemic and the measurement of infection Infections, uh, testing, uh, hospitalizations, deaths, and all of that, right up to the Omicron variant, uh, variant, was always concerned with creating the maximum panic and creating the worst case scenario and playing upon people's, uh, you know, free floating fears on just about anything that could go wrong. The virus was extremely uh, destructive. We know that, we understand that, and to be critical of the statistical record is not to say let it rip. And we, you know, the next thing we'll hear is that it, our, our terrible figures, which are not that terrible, are all the result of Brexit. No, the massaging of the statistics, the rubbish charts that were shown by senior scientific advisors, the a focus on outcomes and arithmetic rather than the underlying assumptions, all those were a complete disgrace from the medical point of view, from any point of view that was trying to help the population get through this dreadful disease. You're talking about, both of you, we're talking about provoking fear. What do you think you're doing right now? For the viewers who are listening to us and watching us now... What you're promoting... Well, we're we're what talking about facts. No, no, what you're encouraging and, uh, them to do... Wait, what you're encouraging them to do, free thinkers, certainly, but what you're promoting now is saying, do not trust the experts, do not trust the medical professional, do not trust a panel of people who... Do you think the World Health Organisation... Do you think the World Health Organisation is a neutral organisation, Marianne? Do you think the WHO is scientifically neutral on every judgement that it makes about medicine and about the virus in particular. Do you I, think that's true? I, that I they're think, impartial at every yes, moment? Yeah, I you think do. they're guided like by the, the United evidence. Nations, their I parent think the, body. Uh, it doesn't really matter about the WHO. Well, no, I think it does. it's probably more, fo uh, more a, a, a relevant focus for us to, to look at SAGE, the Scientific Advisory Group for who Emergencies. Are, who are consistently wrong in their modelling. Well, no, that's a misunderstanding of what modelling is. Modelling is, right? is a dynamic process of... It's not a prediction which can then be proven wrong. Oh, Modelling what? has all these different moving factors that says if you change the people's behaviour, either by requesting them to do something, by sharing information with them, then the, the results will be different. It's the, it's the equivalent, the, the, the kind of the real world, very simple, straightforward, one person analogy is you're standing on a ship and you're worried about getting seasick. So you take some seasickness tablets. And then you're standing on a ship going, oh, I didn't need to take those tablets because I don't feel seasick at all. I mean, that, that's, that's, it's, a, it's that's a rather simplistic headed. analogy. I mean, well, what we're I know, talking about is, is, is so modelling. Modelling is not the same as observation. So science is about observation, no, observing it's, it's, it's about real life it's data. Forecasting. Yeah, well, the forecasting was wrong, obviously. We all know Professor Ferguson's forecasting was wrong and it's been wrong through the whole two years. That's not true. We have observations. So over the two years, we've got observations. A lot of the observations are based on PCR testing. And even the inventor of the PCR test says you shouldn't use them to diagnose COVID or 
any viruses. So a lot of them, in fact, the majority of them were false positives because they were run on what's called a very high number of thermal cycles, which means you can pick up anything. So a lot of the um, cases that were, we, you know, you said there were 2.2 million cases of COVID. 20.2 20. 20. million. OK, 20.2 20. million cases. Yeah, most of those uh, were without symptoms. They were asymptomatic. So That's no one had true. an actual, some people did have a disease, of course, some people had symptoms, uh, but there's only a very, very tiny number of people who had symptoms which were severe uh, without any comorbidities who actually died from the virus. The vast majority but of people who had the PCR that, tests were asymptomatic. So that, they shouldn't have been locked down. They shouldn't have been told to stay at home. They should have been told, carry on until you've got symptoms. Oh, don't man. worry about it. Don't destroy the economy. Don't destroy your kids' education. Don't destroy your lives. Don't lock down. Don't stop seeing your friends. People should be allowed to carry on with life as normal and, and we shouldn't what, have had this. stack up the bodies? No, they the bodies weren't but, stacking you know, up. That's the whole point. You just can't, you you can't, can't accuse, you you can't accuse, on, you can't accuse somebody of wanting to stack up the bodies. That's, That's what not he's promoting. Yeah, and exactly. you can't accuse me and, you can't accuse me and David insane. of trying to scare the population. It's totally out of proportion and it's quite a, a, a low standard of, of debate, if I may say so. What we're discussing here is what was the actual cause of death and the size of the epidemic measured by uh, lots of different ways. And there can be no doubt, I've been a forecaster for 30 or 40 years. I don't claim to be an anthropologist, Marianne, but I do claim to be a forecaster. And if you look at the forecasting and actually the way the deaths were defined, both were extremely deficient throughout the pandemic. They were unprofessional and they were verging on the hysterical. David is quite right about I just think you're absolutely yeah, yeah. wrong. Forecasting fundamentally has a worst, uh, worst kind of possible outcome, a, 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 a least worst outcome, and averaging figures in the middle. What are when you talking about? When you are planning how many lifeboats to have on the ship, you don't go, well... Is this a lovely a a new metaphor on top yeah, of the one yeah, you had before? I'm trying to help you understand... You're trying to help us, but actually <laughs> yeah, we don't need your help. Am. We need to understand just how scary the tactics were of our nudge unit and our behavioural scientists well, throughout the pandemic. That's the thing that we need to concentrate on. It's funny you should on. mention that because I'm just reading here, members of the scientific pandemic influenza group on behaviour express regret about the tactics of fear exactly. that was used. They admitted its work was, I quote, unethical and totalitarian. Uh, that's what, what they do you say. think? Yeah, that's their view, by the way, not No, mine. no, no, they're, they're not the official, that's I didn't not say the official word. body. Hang on. That's this just is, a the scientific pandemic influenza group on behaviour. They've yeah, but, expressed but who regrets. Are they? That's that's a group that some some. They're part of the government's advisors, with. actually. No, they're knew. not. They really aren't. It's one of the subcommittees yes, that advise that's... Sage. Yeah, you'd be wondering it's your favourite Sage organisation. Yes, it's a, a part of. It's a subcommittee that I advises think... the people that you were just telling us that we should all mm. listen to, and this subcommittee think... expresses regret for what it calls That's its right. unethical and totalitarian uh, use of fear to try and control us. Uh, lots of you guys make of that, by the way, what you will. Differing opinions here, all welcome. Um, Jonathan says lockdowns have consequences. Uh, he says, of course, it was right to lock down at the beginning of uh, COVID. The NHS was overwhelmed. It was, Jonathan. But look at the state of the NHS now. So what good uh, some might say, did all those lockdowns and trying to protect it actually do? Um, Adrian says, I work for the NHS and I know people uh, still getting COVID uh, and staff and children, uh, staff and children, etc. The media need to stop bringing down uh, the scientists. Uh, Gareth says, it was abhorrent for healthy people to be locked down as often and for as long as we did. Um, Got to say, I do think it was very peculiar um, no one ever kind of seemed to question the rationale that this one ailment seemed to equally affect a healthy 18-year-old <laughs> and an unhealthy 80-year-old. We're all expected to just accept that. Doesn't discriminate. Value. Yeah, I found it very odd.